When you took that oath, every, every one of you ever served in the military, police, or even firefighters have taken an oath. When you take that oath, that's where your decision is made. Right there in that spot. You pledge, you swear to God Almighty, that you're going to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. At all costs. All of us who served in the military and police, this is our bond, and firefighters too. When we say those words, it's not just something we say. We know that it means we're writing a blank check made out to the people of the United States for an amount up to and including our lives. That's the difference. You want to know the difference? That's it. When a firefighter goes into a burning building, he knows he might not come out. But he's duty-bound to do it. He took upon himself that responsibility. Now, I served as a, fire, as a volunteer firefighter in Montana only for about eight months. I was just a rookie. But I'll tell you what. I saw some men of true character and courage. Those are the guys that run in when everybody else is running out. That's the pure spirit of a guardian who's willing to sacrifice his life. Okay? Sadly enough, though, in this country, people respect firefighters. They still understand that, that they're heroes. They really are. But all too often nowadays, they look at police and they don't see heroes anymore. They look at them and they think, these are the people that are going to come kick down my door. These are the guys that are going to arrest me and tase me on, on some traffic stop. These are the guys I see on YouTube doing, doing things like, like tasing some old lady. Or like in, during Katrina, tackling an old lady to the ground in her kitchen because she dares to hold a revolver in her hand with the cylinder open. Obviously no danger to anybody. Any idiot that understands guns whatsoever should know that, a, that an open cylinder, an empty cylinder, is no danger. What is she going to do, speed load it in two seconds? So they see these things, and they start to see the police in this country as the enemy of the people, as an occupying army. There are all too many people in this country, sincere lovers of liberty, sincere constitutionalists, who are becoming increasingly afraid of their own police officers. I find that sad. I find that tragic. And I find it contemptible, because you know where it's coming from? There are people who want to put a divide, a wall, between the police in this country and the people. They're doing this intentionally. All these MIAC, the MIAC report, that Fusion Center report from Missouri, that labeled just about everybody, the Constitution Party, a supporter of Chuck Baldwin, potential terrorist, a supporter of Ron Paul, potential terrorist, kind of like the Emmys Awards, you know, a supporter of, of uh, immigration control, potential terrorist, you know, and was one of the police officers in Miami, or uh, in Missouri, who saw that and said, hey, I don't like being called a potential terrorist. And so that police officer leaked it. And the same goes for the DHS report that smeared veterans as potential terrorists. That was also leaked by a federal officer, very good man. And in addition, same with the extremist lexicon, was also leaked by a federal officer who did not like the pattern he saw of this wall of separation of this attempt to make police officers think that the people are their enemy. So they pull you over, in their mind, you're a potential enemy, especially if you have a Ron Paul sticker in your car, a constitutional sticker in your car. What's the other one? Live free or die. What, what's the one guy he had a sticker in his car that got hassled? Gladstone flag. He got pulled over, and a police officer, sadly enough, told the reason why I pulled you over is because that bumper sticker on your car. That's a piece of American history right there. This is the flag of our fathers. Our forefathers flew this flag as they gave their lives for our liberty. And yet this flag now is seen as a sign of a terrorist, of a lawbreaker, of an enemy of the people, of a killer of women and children. Contemptible. There are people in this country who do not respect our republic, do not support the Constitution, who desire to destroy this republic. And they are doing all they can to erase our heritage, to make it off limits to dare to fly this flag, to make it off limits to dare to stand in Lexington Green and simply renew the oath you swore by legal obligation. They want it off limits for you to celebrate your heritage to even talk about the Constitution, to even call yourself a constitutionalist. 
I saw that the DHS lexicon says constitutionalist equals militia man equals extremist equals terrorist. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've been calling myself a constitutionalist for years. I didn't know. I had no idea I was extremist. What a revelation. Or a terrorist, yeah. There's a conscious effort to put a divide between the police and the people. They want the police to see you as the enemy. They want you to see the police as the enemy. Is that true? Is that the truth? No. It's like the Matrix in that movie. It's false. It's balderdash. It's nonsense. Okay? And this is one of the big... And I'll tell you what. I started this organization. I already knew there were good police officers out there. I'd I, I been a firearms instructor and, and met quite a few of them here in Metro in, in the past and, and gone to shooting schools with them. Thunder Ranch, you know, gun site, whatever. Had a good time. And I recognized that there was that bond. There's a bond between military and police shouldn't be a surprise. They're all willing to put on a rifle, sling a rifle, put on a pistol, and go do what has to be done to defend their country and, and their neighborhoods and their, and, their, and their friends and neighbors and their families. They take that responsibility. They're warriors. It's that, it's that common bond. Others who have stepped up for active duty, and even us veterans, frankly, who dare to stand up. Don't you think I'm putting a big bullseye on my forehead by doing this? And I'm not exaggerating. When Southern Poverty Law Center does all their smear stuff, are they just saying that to be mean and be, be nasty and maybe a libel suit will come out of it? No. It's potentially deadly. They want the FBI, the DOJ, ATF to come and investigate people like me. That's their purpose. Smear you and marginalize you and then hopefully unleash the power of government against you to silence and suppress you. They want them to come kick down my door in the middle of the night in body armor. They want guys like me to come to my house. They're not going to come do it. Is Mark Potok going to come to my house in body armor and a baklava and with an MP5 in his hand and kick down my door or use a battering ram and come through my door? Is he going to be point man behind the ram? No. He won't come do it himself. He'll send someone like Chauncey or someone like Dave Freeman or someone like Bob back there, big strong guy. He wants someone like that to come to my house and kick in my door and put a submachine gun in my face and my children's face. That's what he wants. He wants them to think that I'm their enemy and vice versa. He wants all of us to think that. And then they expect. Why are they upset about us? It's not because we're, we're not racist. It's not that. They know it too. It's not because we're terrorists celebrating Timothy McVeigh. What they're upset about is the oath. They don't like it when what they perceive as their minions and their toys even think for themselves. Their vision, their perspective, their opinion of the police and military is that they're just like toy soldiers who wind up instead of marching. And they think, because they don't believe in a republic, they believe in this absolute rule, whoever holds political power, they believe we're a democracy, there are people in this country, when they hold political power, they figure, hey, I won the election, all the toys belong to me. And that includes the police and military. They're my toys. I do what I want with. And how dare you interfere with my toys? And they're a little tantrum like a little kid crying and screaming in a sandbox. Don't touch my toys. Don't remind those men and women of honor and courage their obligations under the law. Don't you dare talk to them about their individual responsibility to know the Constitution and to keep their oath to defend it. Don't do that. Don't talk to them. Why? Because I'm encouraging violence? Am I encouraging police and military to go out and start shooting people? No. All I'm simply asking them to do, all we are asking them to do, is to stand down to refuse to comply with unlawful orders, as is their obligation. It's been a long-standing legal obligation to disobey unlawful orders. Not just an option, a duty.